hello, good morning again. <laughs> Fingers crossed it's working this time. Sorry about the uh, issue there. I think that was just uh, a glitch in the system. It wasn't actually anything technical on my end. I had to reboot and start up again. So if in doubt, switch it off, switch it back on again, and it all starts working. Great. <laughs> so hello, good morning. This is Art Cat. My name is Lee Boyd. Uh, if you haven't been here before, this is a weekly drawing, draw along, uh, drawing, drawing demo and art chat. Um, basically, you can ask any art related questions you want to whilst we're doing this in the chat bar, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Or if I can't point you in the right direction, where maybe you can find out the information for yourself. And uh, it's a friendly space. There are lots of people here from lots of different backgrounds in art. Uh, they all have a a different preference and liking for art and hopefully what I do during the, the drawing uh, the next two hours um, you can sort of see some similarities in different art mediums and art genres and how you can tackle some of the problems and issues you might be having with your art, own artwork um, or it might just spark a conversation about artwork in general um, the image that I have up on the screen there is a picture of uh, Melanie Black she was one of the uh, singers from All Saints, uh, and that was done from last week's Sky TV uh, program, uh, Portrait Artists of the Week. They have a Sunday session live on Sky TV Facebook page, which you can click over to on a Sunday morning at uh, 10 a.m. UK time, and you can spend four hours drawing along or painting along uh, with the sitter and the, uh, an artist from a previous um, episode. And the judges, the, well, the judgmentals, will all jump in at different periods of time and have a uh, an in, interesting conversations, and it's been great. They did it during the week. Uh, Lee, having difficulty getting to you today. Uh, hope I'm watching you now live. Yes, you are watching me live, Desri. You just literally popped up on the screen, and then it froze, so I had to reboot everything again. So apologies for that. That was my end, not yours. Uh, so fingers crossed, everything stays there. Um, for those of you who have been watching this regularly, I have a new camera. Uh, so hopefully I won't have to keep switching on and off again. I've got myself in the bottom left hand corner and a drawing webcam which is set up so you can see what I'm working on. So this was the picture of Mel Black. Uh, so I'm going to show you a little uh, time lapse video so you can see it from start to finish and how, how it was created. It was done in about four hours. I've also got a picture on screen of a painting done by uh, an artist called Sargent. I'm sure you'll be uh, well aware of his name. He's quite a famous painter. Um, and I was looking through an art book last night and I came across this and I thought how beautiful it was in its um, in its construction. Not just simply that it's a good representational face but also the expressiveness in some of the mark making techniques. Um, it has akin to a lot of impressionism but a lot of uh, very subtle uh, details in there which are, are almost effortlessly done which is a bit deceptive because some of these things can be um, easily put down but you you have to build that skill level up to see what's accurate and what's not. I'm going to attempt to do this today and there'll be lots of errors within my drawing. I won't make every mark in the right place. Um, Sergeant had a, a, a beautiful capability of seeing a shape and a colour of a texture of a mark and placing that rather than trying to draw an ear and eye, nose and mouth to create some of these face. He would look at certain structures and he, that's what he would paint into his work to create a beautiful image of somebody that was not only uh, that had the likeness but that had some other qualities to it as well. That You know what I was talking about on several podcasts? Um, the, the poetry side of it and it allows both what he is experiencing as an artist but he allows that kind of narrative to kind of infuse and, and inform a viewer of the artwork and that's something I was quite interested in it's beautifully done there's some gestural marks in there which are uh, so cleverly placed so I'm looking at things like the blouse that she's wearing now this is a, a I've cropped the image a little bit it's called head of a capricula uh, so it's a, a lady who was on the island and he used to paint of the locals uh, when he was there on holiday um, but if you have a look at that blouse that she's wearing there's nothing to say to the blouse if you removed all of the other imagery and was just left with 
that imagery of the of the blouse and if we go if I can sort of zoom in a little bit there maybe if I just scale this right up bring this right over but if I scale this right up you'll get to see what I'm talking about so if I say put that in the top right corner that little image there it's very hard to say if you to show somebody on the street just that image it would be very hard for them to guess what that actually is we read in the rest of the information when we're looking at the whole image to kind of guess that it's a a, a, a shoulder of a, of a young woman and a, wearing a blouse um, and I thought that's what I'd like to try it then I'm going to use uh, charcoal I'm going to hide my face you don't need to see that I'm in the bottom left hand corner so that's enough so I'm going to do that today I'm not going to do it in paint I'm going to do it in charcoal but I want to show some of the expressive marks you can create to simplify some of the information so rather than drawing every stitch in every fold uh, we can play around and it's a little bit looser and freer medium of way of doing it it's a little bit more expressive uh, but you can be selective as you're doing it um, but first of all I'm going to show you the uh, the quick video of um, black that I did it'll go quiet for a couple of minutes whilst that's on but you can sit back and you can watch it and enjoy yeah if you've got any questions about it ask me afterwards okay so ready steady go Okay, we're back. <laughs> There's a slight gap between me switching things on and off and them actually appearing on screen, so hopefully you can sort of see and stuff you still here and you stuck with me. Um click back there over to uh, my YouTube screen so I can see you as well. So that was Melanie Black. So you could see there was lots of movement within how that was created, lots of adjustments. There's some big sweeping marks that we got in for things like the sofa and bits and pieces in the background. Um, and it was fun, it was four hours. You can upload your images of what you've created if you're going to have a go on Instagram with my P A O T W, which is my portrait artist of the week. And you've put, if you have a, even if you're just interested and you have a look at those uh, hashtags, you'll see uh, thousands of images of Melanie Black, but done by lots of people from all different walks of life, all different capabilities, some professionals, some are. Uh, just like you just starting out maybe you've been doing it for a little bit while and kind of playing with it and it's just a pastime and they really enjoy it it's a chance to relax but what's lovely about it is it's a really nice community of artists who are sharing their own experiences as well some professional artists like myself occasionally we have difficulties and frustrations and we'll talk about them um you'll see some amateur artists who produce an absolutely amazing piece of work and they're all up there you can kind of go through them, you can see which ones you like, which ones might inspire you to draw in a paint in a certain way or have a go in a certain style. Uh, it really helps you inform your art and you know it can help you be more selective about the types of things that you'd like to, to do in your artwork as well. So it's a great resource for that. So I do suggest go and have a look, try it out, have a look, see what you think. Um, so yes, as I said, it's done on uh, Sky TV Facebook page, 10 o'clock a.m. In the UK time so if you are looking to look at it and view it live from another country you might have to think about the here uh, time differences it is up there all week so you can catch up with it and watch the entire program maybe when you get up wherever you are 
and you have until the following Friday to upload your image for the judges to see it. Now the judgmentals uh, of the show, they, um, I'm not being derogatory, that's something that they call themselves, uh, they select a first, second and third of the artworks that they like and they announce that the following Sunday so the Mel Blatt's will be all judged and they'll be um, selected for tomorrow. So it'll be interesting to see. It's kind of nice to kind of watch and see who, what the judges were looking at and what they were thinking about. It all sparks a conversation. You can also watch the Sky uh, Portrait Artist of the Year, um, which is going out in, at the moment on Sky T Television, Sky Arts, um, on I think that's on Wednesday. And again, it's a bunch of uh, celebrity sitters, famous people, infamous people, <laughs> um, people of notoriety. Uh, so you might not know them famously but things that the great all basically all the great and the good and it's lovely to see the different personalities that are coming out uh, in the portraits that people create because you've got the mix of both the artists sort of artistic interpretation and also the visual imagery of how they capture somebody's likeness so there's a bit of a, it was a bit of a, <coughs> a, a juggling act with those two things um, so yeah I'm gonna have a go at drawing um, the portrait today of the head of the Caprice Girl. Well, I think I said alright. It was painted by a sergeant. Um, I'm going to work in. I'll oh, just turn this around because it is more of a. And that's quite a square image. Mine is more por uh, portraiture. There is more to that image that I've kind of cropped. I just did a very, very quick uh, photogram of it and uploaded it to my computer this morning. So I am going to flip this around just so I can get it into the same orientation or what I mean by that is because it is a more long image it's more literally portrait um, I want to orientate my page to be the same I want it to be portraiture I want it to be rather than what they call landscape I want it to be portraiture now it doesn't mean to say that you can't do landscapes in a portrait format it doesn't mean to say you can't do portraits in a landscape format that's where the confusion lies it's just the orientation of the page. They call that portrait and they call that landscape. But you can create anything on it you want. <laughs> There's no, as I said before, there is no art police. Nobody's going to come around and, and knock on your door and say, "Excuse me, I think you found you put your paper on the wrong way." Um, just whatever you feel comfortable. I always kind of suggest though that if you have an image that is vertical, to try and orientate your page in the same direction, it makes things a little bit easier for you. If that makes sense. Again, if you've got any questions as I'm doing this, don't worry, ask. That's what I'm here for. Anything that I'm using materials-wise, I upload after this is over. So I'll talk about it. I put little links in to where you can maybe buy. Um, hi, Alex. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you, Alex. Um, so yeah, I put links into all the different materials um, that I might, might be using. Um, and so yeah, hopefully that that works out for you. Um, I'm taking my image from a uh, a drum singer sergeant is the artist but it's a book um, that I was looking at um, it's by Edmund Swinglehurst um, hopefully you can see that on screen I'll put a link to that up on uh, the show notes afterwards um, but the image itself is out of copyright which is great which means I can use it um, so yeah I'm going to be working in charcoals today uh, I want to kind of muddy the paper up a little bit just to get a little bit more looser and expressive and you can do this with uh, your graphite if you're using graphite you can use graphite dust a little light dusting of graphite everywhere just to kind of kill the paper a little bit it allows you kind of to be a little bit more free of flowing with marks um, and I have or did have and there's my cat Inky yes she did <laughs> my cat Inky knocks everything off the table onto the floor so I've got a little pot of uh, charcoal dust you can get this from Natrum you can also create your own you can get a compressed charcoal uh, blocks and you can scrape them over sandpaper to create the dust pop them into a little tub and use them that way um, the finer more expensive uh, graphite powder is just more uniform basically um, I'm not going to literally spread it all over the page. What I'm going to look for is the shape. So obviously this is a nice white kind of 
iceberg shape in the bottom right hand corner so I don't necessarily want to put heavy black marks all over that because then I've got to try and rub them away later so I'm thinking about it carefully so but what I might do is uh, have a look to see where certain dark marks are so there's a mark there that kind of covers over her shoulder about there and I say I'm drawing mine maybe up a little bit higher because it's actually more elongated um, image there is more to this image than just that that you can see in the screen it goes down a little bit further um, it's just quite nice because I can't get anything wrong right now I can refine all these marks later the rest of it I'm going to slightly dust in in terms of slightly darker up in the corners you see it's really messy kind of just spews all over the paper a little bit and kind of drifts down but it's a very light application of it I'm kind of applying it more with a brush at this stage um, I can start to pay attention to some of the shapes that I can see and unless you're looking for the big angles and big shapes there's a really dark bit down here so I might pop some more charcoal in there and you can see start to see how these shapes kind of marry up so I'm looking at big shapes and because you kind of put it in fast and you're not worried about it too much it's allowing you to be a little bit more free it also starts to get rid of that fear of the white paper the white page uh, it allows you to just layer m these marks down now again I'm not going to cover brush stroke for brush stroke to, to sort of try and copy so uh, like an exact sergeant copy uh, hey Michael good morning uh, <laughs> just in there, I hope you're all well yes we're all well I had a little problem getting on this morning so we were, we were a little bit like kicking off a uh, slight technical issue but good news everybody new camera it won't switch off um, it won't be me leaning across so uh, I was pleased to get that all set up that was all ready to rock and roll but then there are problems with uh, YouTube I think it was this morning um, and they decided it was switching itself off so that was out of my control I had to restart the computer again so yeah I'm just going to block some of these marks in it's quite loose quite free I'm putting them kind of in my judgy use my eyes to kind of judge where certain shapes and marks are so looking at things like a hair well, maybe where a hairband might come over maybe where the top of the head is maybe that ear there it's maybe darker her ear is actually darker than the background at that point so I might put a little mark in there maybe where her jaw is and maybe this triangular shape just underneath the jaw you can almost see already this kind of head shape starting to appear and where the body is and you know where this area is coming out the back over the back of where her shoulder is um, where the neckline might come right down to there get rid of the dust and at this stage I think that's kind of fun to kind of just block it all in really loosely and freely this isn't necessarily the refined drawing it's going to end up being but what it does do it gives me sort of a basic coverage of not just tone but placement of things where I don't have to worry too much then about where I'm going to place the image into the into the drawing this is just a, a soft cotton uh, rag is that a pound light time makeup brush uh, I think it's both before no it's not but you can get them basically a mop brush would be great for that you know like a bl blusher brush it works great for this uh, this is a more of a the one I got I think from Bradbury Graphics by looks at it which is a, an art shop here in Northern Ireland you can get them from Art and Home as well basically it's a larger mop brush um, it's very soft bristle so I'm not scrubbing the paper so I use a, almost like watercolour brushes that are like mops rather than um, the more coarser hog hair brushes that you find in oil painting I think they're a little bit too scratchy for this and they don't hold the charcoal quite well and spread it all over the page so um, it is very dusty it is very messy already my hands are getting filled with charcoal so um, might be a good idea to have some wet wipes uh, close at hand um, I am now going to go to if I can find it my eraser because I think my cat has had that off of 
of the table as well. <laughs> and rather than the small mono erasers that we've been kind of I've been talking on about quite a lot, um, these shaped ones. We can go to these later. This is a bigger one because we're still on doing sort of the bigger shapes. There it is. See, I was blaming my cat and it wasn't on the floor. Um, this is just a plastic eraser you can get from Stadler, you can get them in pound shops and things like that. It's quite consistent. Um, I'm going to loosely block out some of the lighter marks I could see in her top. And how that kind of W mark goes. And it kind of fades out. So how I'm using the rubber, I'm kind of pressing it hard here and getting lighter there so it's uh, it takes a lot off and then a little bit and it kind of fades out and it starts to marry some of the marks. Can you see that brush stroke? Uh, it's on the right hand side of her shoulder just about there, just underneath this W shape. It, it's um, quite highlighted and then it fades away. And this one comes down at that angle, coming down into a collar and it kind of curves around now because there is graphite sorry charcoal on the page already it's starting to pick out the contours of her if you that's something out the contours of her blouse and you can sort of follow the angles down um, as this comes down here it comes over yeah, this part isn't on your page um, but we can start to see the shape of her shoulder starting to appear this comes all the way it doesn't just stop there it actually comes out all the way out the back here and there's a beautiful mark that comes over here which has caught the light a little bit of the top part of her shoulder and this is definitely lighter down that part goes over. the light is coming down from one direction it's hitting the top of her forehead but it's also hitting the top of her shoulder which is going to be lighter and then it comes round over to this point and there's a big splashy bit which goes back there like that but it doesn't go fully over there's a bit of a um, a block here comes out and down might actually just adjust the camera a little bit just so you can see that There we go. That's a little bit better for you. Um, again, you can go back, back over this stage. You're literally sketching with large sweeping marks, rather than you know we've been looking at a very considered way of how we um, place the drawing down initially, and how we were making little marks to begin with, and the structures of shapes and faces, etc. Uh, why did first pass you seem to leave out the eye sockets? Yeah, um, I can start to put those in. I was literally trying to find out where the head was first. <laughs> so uh, before I can place the eyes, I need to know where the head is. And you know, over the last few weeks, how I've been drawing is literally placing structural marks down. This is very same, but it's a lot looser. It's a bit more expressive. It's a different dra the drawing style uh, end result. Um, we can refine it as we go along. You know, as we start to know where the head is, we can map in some of the larger marks so we can refine in where the shape of the head is and the eye socket marks and the big shape of where that eye is on the right hand side not just the pupil and the eyeball itself but also um, the eyebrow and the uh, the whole of the eye socket we map those things we can map that shape in where it's under the nose map that shape in where it's under the chin so, so we get a more accurate feel for what shape the head is before we start to refine it a little bit um, so I'm just literally blocking in spaces and shapes right now. So I'm finding out where the shape of her shoulder is. Ah, oh, you're going to do to see where the head is first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know it sounds simple, but you know it's one of these things that we often kind of we we'll jump ahead three or four steps, and we have to kind of like step back to understand where we might have gone wrong. I've done it before. I've jumped into where I want to get into the juicy part of the interesting part of the picture, and just forgotten where I placed it. I've, uh, I've done it live <laughs> and it's uh, it, it, it just takes your time to kind of consider where certain aspects are um, this is much straighter um, 
it kind of comes out on this side a little bit you know there's a bit of a shadow that comes around before it reaches her neck there's a little bit of a highlight just underneath her chin I'm trying to see where that is in comparison with everything else I've got the uh, artwork in front of me here so that's why I'm looking down every five minutes um, I'm saying that's roughly where her neck is and um, this is where it's capturing the light and it comes out like that it's back in and this does as we said you like a modern bod bros and it made me laugh uh, because I realized that some of my explanations of things are very bob brosian if that's a, a phrase um because I because uh, I'll talk about the quality of the marks so I got this just out here and it's kind of sparky and it just does it I describe marks uh, verbally but it can actually help you inform how to use the materials and tools so if something's soft and faded I'm going to use a very soft and faded way of putting it down. I'm not going to scribble it out. So the scribbly out version is a lot harder and more aggressive, whereas the faded out, the fading floatiness of it, I want my rubber eraser at this point to fade and float over the surface. So how you can describe something verbally can often tell you how to use your materials and experiment with them. At this stage is a joyful process because you know anything I'm putting down I can draw over, you know, it's a part of the enjoyment of doing this artwork of this this way. Um, I'm going to blow off some of the, I say, I'm not blowing onto the page, but uh, I'm loosely dusting off any loose flakes of charcoal, but also any bits of rubber. Now, it's kind of going over what I've already put on, so there's lots of kind of adding and reduction and adding and taking away. I'd take it away. Um, so yeah, I can go back in. I can start to see where her shoulder is now, but I can start to see how far away. If that is her shoulder, this neckline comes in a little bit deeper and thicker than where I had it. I can start to just slowly darken some of these areas in the gap for her neck it goes up that on that way it reaches the the way so the collar collar might come up a wee bit so this is definitely darker and if that is her jawline there it's a very painterly way of uh, you'll hear that an awful lot even though it's a dry medium you'll, people will explain or um, talk about how painterly the marks are because they kind of flow into each other but we're using a dry medium it's not necessarily to say that you can only um, people say you draw with paint and you paint with uh, drawing materials it, it can sound a bit confusing but basically it's a very much flowing uh, faster flowing medium you can do this with charcoal as well and chalks and pastels and things like that normally they're called pastel paintings but it's a dry medium um, so don't get too hung up on things like the technical aspects of whether it's paint or drawing, you know, whether it's called painting or or not. So I'm just refining that neckline a little bit. Obviously that's going to have a knock-on effect to where her face comes out. Let me knock that back a little bit. And now her face will come out there and comes up there. So that's the side of her head. That's where her hair is. So her hair might come down a little bit. Um, what I can do now is start mapping some of these things in. Um, again, I could use a rag or I could use a brush just to kind of take them off. This is all ba base background stuff. This is all kind of um, textural that will add to the picture as we go along. I've um, got a natrium block here. I've got my um, pads that I use with the pan pastels so I'm actually going to use my pan pastel pads so if you notice this morning I haven't used any sharp pointed mediums and it's a great way of quickly and expressively putting down the structure of where it is but without being too tight and too clinical because often we'll um, be afraid to adjust as we go along and in this kind of process it's really great practice it really kind of frees you up loosens your arm um, but gets you to see 
the qualities of the drawing that you want to do. Obviously, I'm looking at a sergeant, so it's going to be a lot more flowing than um, sort of say uh, a much more analytical, tight, analyzed, rendered uh, drawing. It's not to say one's better than the other; it's just different flavors of art. I just thought this week would be nice to kind of let the uh, let the charcoal fly. Uh, you know, and I could go in over this and over it and over it and refine it, you know, past the stage of what the image was telling me. You know, I might start to look at earrings and look at the style of that earring that she's wearing and try and source out the information for it and draw it out and refine it even further to the point it becomes more realistic. Um, but in there it's more, impre there's a more, more of an impression of it. Um, here I'm just going to map out certain structures this is the pan parcel again um, so parcel and charcoal work really well together you kind of following the marks I've already put in uh, you can see how far things are away from each other and put a little mark in there which might be the corner of a of a jawline there what that marries up to when we look at certain structures of a of the head and this is more where the top of her ear goes to the back of their head how far that comes out for her hair which comes up this way so again this is like the structural way I, I would normally draw but because it's I'm not worried about you know I can adjust all of these things I can rub them out and let the texture start to inform the structures and shapes of the, of the body um, being careful because I know that Sometimes you can skew your vision by having your drawing surface up to a different surface that of your uh, image that you're working from. And if you're looking down on it, it can elongate. And when you try and put it flat, you can sort of crush it. So try and get them to be the same. If you've got your drawing up in front of you, have your artwork up in front of you. If you've got it on a desk at home, maybe on a kitchen table, you need to lean over the top of it to see it. You can get some really good... Uh, tabletop easels to start to prop things up and you can get um, I've got one here just in front of me you can get these little little stands where are we what we get you in camera and basically you pop them up and you can set a book in them great for the sort of doing your recipes when you're cooking you know, basically a cookbook recipe stand would be just good to hold your art materials or your um, if you get bored and then you can draw it on that um, or pop your reference material up in it as well so I am literally going to pop my book up on my stand just to move a few things out of the way. Those particular ones I got, there's a charity shop in uh, Hollywood. I uh, can't remember which one I see it is, what it's called. Um, but you can now have the perfect excuse to go charity shop hunting. Um, it's in Hollywood in here in Northern Ireland and had them for a couple of quid and they're brilliant. <laughs> it's just perfect for what I need. Sit on my desk, hold it up nice and straight, and I can literally look from one to the other without having to clip my artboard up. I have got my um, iPod holder, iPad holder, and occasionally you can get a book that kind of fits in there, but this is such a large book it would never fit in that space. Um, so, yeah, um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm looking at maybe where her top of her hair is, that hairline, it's a lovely triangular shape. Uh, to her head, up there a little bit, and then comes back down that way a little bit, and then goes back out that way a little bit. But overall, we get this kind of triangular shape. Now it might not be; it might be down too far, so we move that up. Maybe get rid of some of those marks as I did it. Uh, This side of her head is a lot darker than maybe this side of her head is anyway. And it curves around. Uh, yeah, it's up there. Let's sort of block in some of these. Then there's a lovely curve of where this kind of meets where her headband is. You see, it comes up that way. All of this is in shadow. See, a little dab of this goes an awful long way. Um, I 
looking at that headband it's more angular than you would first imagine because I don't think headbands must be round so you try to do a perfect curve and then you have to look at it and think actually it's just angles it's a bit that goes over the back of it there and all that's quite dark there's a bit of a highlight in between I'm just gonna maybe put that in a bit heavy but So we start to see where shapes are. So again, looking at the bigger thing, I'm not concerned too much about um, the smaller details. As I said, about trying to find out where the shapes of things are, rather than the accuracy of them because you can refine the shapes and the accuracy starts to develop uh, well, itself, but accuracy is the lifelikeness of something um, but you can see quite quickly we're starting to get an awful lot of that head in um, you know we might start to map in some of these shapes and angles now of where eye sockets are and this kind of shape of the eye socket it comes down this way and then that way and then comes out this way much more of a horizontal line and it comes back up that way and it comes straight down this way and then back in this way these are all angles and shapes and then what I'm going to do is just block the entire thing in and then I can see why hang on a second because that to me needs to come way over more this way so I think that's where that shadow of her nose actually comes down and out so I had it back here just move it across and um, I'll make a lift that shadow. I'm not going to worry about it too much I'm going to go on to the next one just so I can marry the shape up of that so if this is the size and structure of that eye which goes into the hair which goes out to where the ear is and the ear comes up this way and then there's a mark just about there where it can denote the the lobe of the ear as it kind of comes back in around the face and the mark comes down this way it doesn't pass this part where her jawline is this is all in shadow anyway That little mark is about there, and this little mark about there. So, if I'm kind of using the edges of something now, if you don't have one of these things, you can use literally the edge of your charcoal to do exactly the same thing. This is all very loose, so I'm not worried about it too much. I can move lines up and around a little bit, I can move things in to refine them. Um, block it in, let's put this other part of this eye, now it's not directly straight across, it's turned away, the head is turned away from us, so the eye itself I think comes in about there and goes up that way, which means its hair comes down more to meet it, and then comes up this way a little bit, um, the side of its head comes in a little bit more than so I'm looking at the width and the distance I've got so this space is a little bit more narrow than I've got it at the minute so I'm going to bring that line in so even though we're starting to do the eye sockets because Alex made a great point about putting the eye socket, sockets in I was going to find out where the head is sometimes you've got to adjust the head as well there's a kind of refinement I kind of got the head shape but I know I need to kind of there's more hair at the top of this head as well which goes over the back of this uh, headband but I've got the kind of rough shape but as I start to do it there's a little bit more refinement because this is so loose and free and expressive for the moment it's great fun um, to sort of draw like this but I need to have a certain amount of understanding about where things are still I can't just randomly shove things in all over the place otherwise it would become quite abstract 
if that is the style of work that you like great that's not a problem if you're doing it with a certain sense of goal and aim and that's the reason why you're doing things in a certain way it makes sense if you're if you're kind of moving things around and you haven't got clues as to why you're doing it it's a bit random you'll constantly be a little bit frustrated with the quality in your work because it's kind of all over the place you know um, I can start to see this headband a little bit better now maybe it a little bit too high up so it came down that way and then that way so there's a bit of readjustment a little bit and um, the head is starting to appear a little bit smaller so I can move this in a little bit and up to about there because I think yeah this line is a bit more mine was very it's starting to go more horizontal that way not particularly horizontal but it was a little bit shallower and mine's more the angle is actually a little bit more acute which is kind of more that way that way coming down into where the sh the, uh, the chin is going around that way um, size and scale of nose and eyes again to kind of see where things are starting to uh, to sit there and put a little mark as to where these things are just as a key indicator it just gives me a uh, an anchor point to work from so we're starting to get the suggestion of where the eyes are already uh, the nose again I can this is more of a an angular thing so that's one nostril there's a shadow line which goes right across that one and there's another one which goes up to where the nostril is on that side it doesn't come out this far it's almost in line with that eye so I know that that is where the shadow line is I can't go further than that um, it comes underneath the nose so I can color that whole area in and it's like a it's very curved underneath I'm going to put a curve in so just a shadow can tell you where the nose is without necessarily having to go too tight and too definite you know where the nostrils if that's the width of the nose that I have there maybe that's the side of the nose the nostril was coming on the top of it there so just a little tiny dab of even just the very tip just a little tiny dab of uh, charcoal just to give you a suggestion of where that nose is underneath it uh, we start to get the sense of where those lips are it meets very much with the shape and space the top part of the lip marries the kind of the width of that nose and then it goes down from there quite obliquely on this side oh, that's too much take that back a bit it's very light and it comes out to almost in line with corner maybe center of that pupil which is about there and put that line in because it's quite straight at that point that's quite dark at that point and then there's a lovely square shadow just underneath or re rectangular should we say of her it's, it's underneath her bottom lip I'm not drawing her bottom lip I'm drawing the shadow underneath the bottom lip and there's a slight shadow to a bottom lip on there as well so I'm going to put that slight shadow in so you start to get a resemblance of a face there relatively easy without you know refined definite detail and I can go back in and refine these shapes and shadows because um, I know that this face then comes in at this point it's quite it's quite um, close to this cheek it's not so far out as I've had it out here it's slightly closer in and it comes up and it's soft this, this turn is maybe too harsh so I'm going to bring that softness around into it and soften some of those lines just by rubbing over these are covered like with a little pad that you can get for makeup brushes so if you don't have one of these you can get a makeup brush and do exactly this the makeup pads um, they show they come in like different shapes and triangles and bits and pieces 
um, you can get these shapes from the same company called it's actually called a company called soft s o f f t and they do packs of these as well so i'll put a link up to the uh, you can get these in art and home which is a local shop here in northern Ireland, but if you're not anywhere near us um i'll put a link into what you can get on amazon as well um so they're lovely kind of like a memory foam but they're not they don't stay in that shape as a memory foam um but they're great for kind of mark making and putting marks down i might even use this as a as a drawing tool as well because it's got a lovely squarish edge now i know i'm starting to see the structure of her head and how big it's going to be i can start to see and adjust some of the marks i've got here so i think that's where that horizon line kind of um blocky darker area is and as it comes up there and sweeps back down that way and then it curves back over her shoulder there I could darken that down as well um, I think this part of her neck comes down and under there and we start to see maybe use a broader one ah, I'll go back to use my pad um, sometimes you have like a favourite pencil or that you kind of draw everything through with you start to have an affinity with certain uh, tools for your work that's okay um, what I say is if you're using a pencil you might need to change about your ranges but you can how you use that pencil what you start to feel comfortable with might be an element of your own artistic practice coming out so um, what I'm going to say to you is don't be tempted to use everything down at the point like for holding a pen it'll kind of restrict you from making the marks that you need to make you can play around with it if you you can get down to there and, and be very tight and controlled but you also need to jump back to the end of the pencil so if you're used to kind of using the pencil or your pad or your paintbrush in lots of different ways you can be more expressive because you've got a great scheme of art marks that you can make uh, mark making techniques which will help inform creating the portraits that you want to create hopefully that all makes sense um, I'm now judging where this line is so I'll put it in loosely about there but again this is kind of off of your image you can kind of see the collary part and there's a little bit that kind of comes out from the neck there Again, this is lovely and painterly but the rest I am going to kind of sculpt from that way so I'm putting in more background and letting the image of her top kind of appear negatively I'm putting on charcoal and the whiteness of her shirt is starting to stand out do you see how that works rather than trying to paint white on the board I'm putting black on and letting the page do some of the work for me because some of the marks on here are starting to indicate kind of material and um, folds and how it naturally undulates when it goes over the shoulder and around the collarbone this comes in right close down here And this face is darker as well. There's a lovely shadow around this part of the cheek, um, and it comes down from this nostril here as well, and across where that top lip is, and a slight kind of turn just under her, under the kind of the crease of her mouth just there, which then forms this might be a little bit wider than I have it. Um, That shadow actually continues all the way over into that corner of the mouth, but right to the corner of the face there. So again, very little is saying an awful lot. And often we think the quality in a likeness or the detail of a likeness is all down to how much time you spend with the pencil point. And I'm going to say to you, it's not. Um, it's down to how your place marks can inform an awful lot very accurately. But it's just about the placement of them and you can 
adjust where you make a mark as you go along if you're willing to move it I'm going to cover that whole face in a light dusting of charcoal I think this line is, is looking very dark because it's not coming out far enough so I'm going to place that darkness a little bit wider it's very thin up it's thinner up here it comes out but it shapes different it kind of comes out underneath this bit here and then it comes down at an angle almost in in the same angle as this collar line does obviously it starts to deviate because it bends and folds etc it's not perfectly straight but as it comes down here all of this is the same tone same tone darkness I'm going to pop that in You see the angle of her neck that comes out now it comes out to a chin there so her chin actually comes out further there and comes up now something's happening that I might have to move this mark back because I might have it too far out so take rubber go back to where I can see it if that is the mouth there and this is the mark underneath the chin to give you a little hint of where her neckline is if you follow that mark straight up on the image from her neck straight up what is it you hit I mean, actually hit the middle of that top lip so if that's where the top lip is I need to come back down there make a little mark pull it in this way and that's where her neck is and it starts to make more sense about the marks over this side but where the back of her neck is if her neck was that wide she'd be like Mike Tyson She'd have this hugely big, big, thick neck. And she's much more refined and elegant than that. Um, so some of the marks we can start to use there, this comes down this way for a collar. That mark we can leave in. This collar line then starts to move back as well. If this comes all the way down to this point here. So this collar line that I've had over here is actually here. So it's it's a constant kind of to and fro in the to just where you think things are and where you need to put them and don't be afraid to move them because the difference about obviously I'm not saying I'm not anywhere near it's like a sergeant don't don't get me wrong for it for one second but he would just be considering these marks a little bit more before placing them on his canvas he was always considering and looking and it may have looked effortless and quick and speedy but you know he will be looking at marks and where they need to go for a while before just leaning forward and putting them straight on um, maybe that this whole chin actually comes down a little bit a little bit softer and comes around softer still and then from about that point it comes in so again this Mark that I have here, I think needs to come in just a little tad more. It's about there. Gives me a nice kind of place to kind of place this uh, earlobe. Now I'm rubbing it out and it's going to look really, really white, but I'm going to go back in and just rub my cloth just over the top of it, or you could do it with a brush as well. I'm not putting any charcoal on, just knocking that back so it, I don't want it to be that white there's a lovely mark where we said we had the ear in here and um, we'll stick that back in just to give us an anchor point again just to highlight there's a little another one just on there where the eyebrow ridges there's a one at the bridge of the nose which is about there and the one at the tip of the nose which is about there a little highlight which is just off that side of the mouth and there's another one that comes down on this side of the mouth as well at the top of the head here a little tiny slither of a, a mark just there and then the corner of her eye comes in about there so these ghostly little marks that we can kind of see these wispy marks as we start to shape this is a very sculptural way of, of drawing now I'm going to put a a wash of uh, charcoal over the top of that again 
just very very lightly and if you're wondering oh this might be too dark I'm not too sure you can use your spare page that you should always have beside beside you just to kind of dab it first to see what, how dark it is you've got it um, but I think that whole face needs to get darker there's nothing on that face which is as white as that page so I need to get rid of the white page but I'm now starting to see that shape this needs to be re, uh, refined a little bit um, there is the neckline now which has come back over this way um, that mark I might get rid of we we'll put things down one second and go to pick back up in a completely different place um, <laughs> because my mind is on this I'm not on where I'm putting my, my materials that's why it happens um, this is lighter this is where it's the lightest part of her top on the on her left hand side um, this angle comes out this way I'm starting to get the distance now much better than I had it initially but that's okay that's part of a drawing developing so hopefully you can appreciate that on your drawings you won't be right the first time you won't get the accuracy straight away you need to kind of build up to that inner drawing um, and then that comes that way I can start to whole wash this whole area in a little bit dark just to lift out where this face is a little bit um, this is very much dark down here so I'm going to put this in now the difference between this and a very very tight drawing is it's just this same process done to the point of refinement so keep going back in and adjusting, keep going back in and adjusting, keep going back in and adjusting. Um, if you're taking your time to place marks, to really consider where they need to go, taking the time is not kind of blattering through this process. You're really considering each mark. It's not that they're scared to adjust their marks um, in the style of their work. It's just they will draw incredibly lightly to begin with until they are sure where things are completely whereas this is a little bit has a bit of freedom to it where you can you know experiment a little bit and we'll put that whole kind of length of that wall in this is all darker her face is appear, appearing lighter so I'm going to just this right up in it to the edge of the face so I don't have a halo mark often when you see people doing this this they're too scared to go into the face so they kind of float around the edge and they leave this like white halo marking around the face um, I don't want that to happen I want this whole face to kind of be a part of the scene not separate from it it's a lovely mark see when this comes down here it gives you that sort of neckline and there's a fold in her sleeve which is about here it's just off of your reference picture but um, I'm going to put it in just so you can sort of see where I'm going with it this is further back it's funny how you, how you your mind and your eye plays tricks with you this is further back I'm going to take that out because it's this wide it comes out to here and then that's where we start these kind of that's better that's where we start those W shaped marks that kind of W shaped mark um, I think it's down there and then out there Maybe not that low. Pick it up a bit. It comes up there a bit. <coughs> and then that was being supposed to say, start off hard, getting light. Start off hard, getting light. Start off hard, getting light. <coughs> and it starts to actually represent the actual brush stroke a little bit because it's, this brush stroke has like a translucency to it. It's just wisps of light and dark in it. 
at that point I think it's very much darker so you could be a little bit more definite about putting these marks in so this is where that first mark is and then comes down there and there's a lovely mark just finishing off that point there that's where the edge of that comes to and they join up obviously but where they join up you can kind of look at the distance from the bottom top of a chin the bottom of a chin um, to the part where these two pieces of the the blouse meet and then again you can't quite see it on your screen but my image tells me that this mark then goes off this way there's a darker mark the shadow that comes down here it goes up and it kind of tells me that it's informed that that's in the right place it comes up that way and at this so that way and all of this is dark so I'm allowing the edge to inform where the shirt is now you can start to see it, it's kind of moved around a little bit um, and it, I want to I'll let you know that that's okay, it is part of the process I think uh, when we're starting off we want to control absolutely everything that goes on on the page and get it right because there's an urgency about being right um, the problem is we very seldom are <laughs> so you've got to be able to be flexible and learn how to adjust I think that's the biggest thing in in painters is adjusting what you're doing you know you adjust your eyes you adjust your response you put a mark down you adjust your response to it go mm, needs to move and don't let the um, a frustration of a mark not being in the right place be the the guiding factor in your artwork it should be kind of the development of it going oh okay i need that just needs to move up or that just needs to move to the left or you said you've heard me say it a thousand times it should be a mantra on a t-shirt just up to the left just up to the right um it sounds like a bad dad dance move so yeah i'm just looking at that shadow and you know, it might come need to come down just a wee tad more a bit further over maybe it's a bit mean going that far in maybe I do need to come out just a little tad more that's it as I said you can adjust relatively quickly this is a little bit straighter than I have it because it kind of goes up as it goes away from us but that head is looking three quarter view she's got a head turned a bit to us um, I don't know judging where the side of her face is kind of comes over that way that's better putting that fading shadow in just underneath the nose um, the shadow underneath the nose is a bit darker than I've got it it's enough to say where the lips are you know without having to be too definite um, just have to click a button this isn't about the camera this is about my monitor I just need to switch itself off <laughs> I really don't know how to do it, but I, I'm, hopefully you'll agree. It's been great not having to switch this camera off and on again. Um, that I've had to do normally every week. Uh, this is definitely darker. I'm gonna pop that in. Again, I've not used anything today, which has been a small pencil point or paintbrush point. This is all big stuff. A 
this is where her top of her eyebrow is here. It's now telling me that this mark needs to come over a lot more than I've got it. It needs to come over that far. And it goes up that way. And it's come down to there. And then it starts to go over this way. And it disappears actually at this point into the, into the darkness of this anyway. So this is all dark. Which allow me to see where this headband starts to come over this way a little bit. So I'm starting to ma marry up where some of these marks are. It comes over that way. I might just use my rubber just to drag a headband in. Just to give me a, a sense of where oh, this is straight at that point. I don't think that's too far up. Maybe there. And then it comes down there. So my headband was out there. You'll see when I start to put in the contour mark there of it. I'm actually covering up where I thought I had it before. Um, that's another mark for it so I get to see where the distance is above this uh, ear which might come up a little tad more because it's more almost in line with this eyebrow there so again I might have been a bit mean with how long her ear is so I'll lighten that whole area get rid of these marks a little bit because a little bit confusing didn't get rid of them completely because I'm using some of the marks to inform where things are. So that's where things are. This is about the width of her hair here. Where things are a lot darker. This is lovely where it's come down here because I might have put mine too high up initially. Comes down there. It's a dark mark here. Then we get the curve and darkness of this one part of the um, the headband, and then at the back of it, a bit thicker, and it flares up just a little bit. Maybe not that much, <laughs> but it flares up just a little bit, a bit of a rounded corner to it, to give a suggestion of where the back of that hair is. And then it comes back over that way. And there's a bit of a lightness to the back of the hair up here, it's lighter here, suggested here, and disappears behind the headband on that side. Again, this is all dark really dark in comparison and it matches back in with this part which is then going into the darkness of this picture the picture actually stops about kind of there stops kind of there anyway and comes straight across this way down this way. So I'm using the, the the format of the picture itself as well to help me figure out where certain things lie and need to adjust and move. But you can see how relatively quickly we're getting a shape that works for us. Um, and again, this is before I've gone and refined anything at all. It's just the big marks, and it's kind of much more sculptural. It's much more impressionistic. It's quite abstract in its format. There's some the mark just comes down here at the back of the head. And see where that lies up to, which is about there. I don't know what that mark is. It might be just something in the background that he sort of captures as a, as a gesture, but it might be good to sort of pop in to help placement of other things. So we can see how far it comes down in relationship to the top of her ear. And that 
and I prefer hair comes down here a little bit more and then across and there's a ship down just in there with a point of her headband here and it comes down this way And the ear point that I had back here is actually a lot fur further up than I had it. It's almost in line with the her. Uh, eyebrow. But it just allows me to have space to follow the forms to bring this down to where a little bit of the channel of the ear there to where the earlobe is. And that marks in quite a good place. There's a slight little tick mark there which is where the earlobe bends around and inside of all of this you have where the earring is that comes around all these highlighted points there's a little tiny um, shadow just there and a highlighted point just in front of that shadow gives you space before you reach that mark this definite mark of where that collar line is. So like I said this is very much looser. This isn't about doing perfect mark for perfect mark, but you can see how you can flow around an image relatively quickly and speedily. Uh, so if you're drawing from life, it might be a good practice to get in into so to kind of seeing where shapes are before getting caught up in minutia of detail. Um, I still think that this jawline has to come over a little bit more. Yep. Might look a little bit harsh that kind of change that I've put in there, but I can soften that out a little bit. Soften out by brush. Soften out by the rubber. Again, come in that under and down, down that way. Don't want to put too much of her, of her neck. Uh, some of these little marks we've got for the collar on the other side are quite important to put in still. They might seem to kind of throw away little things, but it just adds that depth to where her neck is. This whole area, I think, and I can start to scribble in. I'm going to lightly use the pad just to push this charcoal and this pastel around. Very much darker over here. It comes right into where the head is, so I'm not being afraid to put this down. So you can do this with charcoal, uh, sorry, graphite pencils as well. Uh, use graphite dust, these big blocks of graphite, which you can get by uh, Candash, do them. We can get cheaper versions of, of them as well. The only thing I like about the Candash ones is, is um, not the only thing, but it's the consistency of the graphite. Um, it's not scratchy and bitty in places. It's really, really smooth, but it's called Graph Cube. Uh, one worth looking out for. I'll put a link to those in as well. Some of these little marks and flourishes and brush strokes that he's got in are kind of a nice exaggeration of the whole whole image. So we're not sort of making it perfectly dark and perfectly black. There's a little bit of life to these kind of marks that he's got in certain places. You know, it's a little bit darker in certain areas, like her cheek, which is about there, as that starts to spread out. 
the funny thing is if you keep rubbing with these if I start rubbing with that it actually starts lifting it off um, but you can use it like an eraser in some parts but you know, you flip it around there's a lovely part about there maybe that's a bit too heavy um, Kind of, it's a, a suggested edge, like a pillow or something, and then there's a bit of, of a triangle thing coming up here, and a square there. Oop, is it there? No, it's here. See, didn't adjust that. Um, put a square there and a triangle just above it here. Just as a shape, you know, it could have been where you kind of quickly mark things in, but that means that whole, that's the whole area is dark. Again, this is further down off the image. You can just see that kind of W shape in your side of the image where it comes up and around here. You see how far away that is away from the face. I'll exaggerate it a little bit for us. So this is the W mark you can see now. Would it really matter if we didn't put that in? Not really. It's an artistic license, but what I'm doing, kind of try to do, is look at the marks that we have on the page as a demonstration. And he's used a brush mark here, here, there, there, there. To inform where the edge of her face is, but it looks like it's part of something in the background because he's kind of gone back over and maybe just darkened it, muted it down. You can see, this whole face is kind of a lot more of a subtle tone. It's much darker on this side. Put to push this graphite in with a soft brush the same on this side of the nose again I'm just using the charcoal that's already on the page to move that around this is a lot darker this is definitely darker you know that bit just above her eyebrow I think this hairline comes down a wee bit about there comes out across well let you dust some charcoal if I don't flip over to the other charcoal powder rather than using the pastel just to lightly brush this in There's a, a real sort of three dimensionality starting to happen if we, again without any detail at all. I'm not saying that detail is bad, it's not. Putting it in its right place will really make a picture. But I think we're so focused on detail being likeness, that's not often the case because likeness can come from a number of different aspects. Um, I'm just allowing the mark making process to do some of the things that you need it to do can work wonders whereas if you're trying to control it because of detail it can really throw us out right hopefully that's helping you let me know uh, is it just a discipline that you try to 
track background but we would suffer it just to block in the background a random yeah I'm not doing it necessarily at random I think you, you would suffer if you were doing it at random because you would throw certain things out so I'm always looking at conscious of looking at the image that I'm creating it from whether it be from life or from a, um, a photograph it's to try and understand if I've got something physical and something that's in behind it how does that look like it is behind it and there's a couple of things one that the light might be darker further away from the image that's lit so that image is darker there's certain structures in there which have a suggestion of a place so um, if you remember back to Melanie Blatt's ones there's like these rectangle and triangle shapes which actually her sofa because it was in her house but the shapes give the impression of a sofa not I didn't draw a sofa I didn't want the detail and um, the accuracy of those shapes to be the thing that everybody started looking at. I wanted Melanie Black to be the thing that I started to look at and those things to suggest and to give the impression of a sofa. Uh, some people won't even, uh, the viewers will look at things in lots of different ways. Just to just do it. So we can get a bit of crap. Um, yeah, people will see things and not see them. There'll be there in the back when people won't see them until they're pointed out did you see the sofa they go oh yeah I didn't see that um, like this little mark we don't really know what it is but what it does do is it pushes the face forward you notice this little lighter mark it's loosely done but it pushes the detail and softness of this face forward tonally you know some of these marks can blend into one another so if I can take that cloth and just rub them in so they're softer and more muted and then in certain areas they're really dark in certain areas her hair is darker than this darkness in the background it really gives a vibrancy of depth which again lifts it off the detail lifts it off even though this is darker the sharpness of it gives it focus brings it forward um, I say just having that lovely sense of freedom about not not worrying about having the perfect line actually allows you to do the perfect image. And it sounds kind of intuitive. I know. I know it sounds a bit weird. Um, I'll wrap this around my finger and draw my finger. So I'm lifting some off here, and I can start to see where this eye comes across. Comes across there. Where that mark is. How that whole area is darker. Quite subtle. It's got a harder edge on this side. Swings around. Comes right down. Had it stopping. Had it stopping too far up. Comes right down here. This is all quite the same. And as I do this, you can see this. this edge getting a little bit softer it is softer on this part and it's crisper on this part um, I think we need to, need to move that mouth down a little bit we can refine this as I say as we go along we can refine it I can move across to my charcoal pencil this is actually a hard charcoal pencil and I can start to adjust some of these marks because I know now where the head is I can start to map in some of the finer points of that shadow and how it comes down this way and it goes back out that way again I put them on lightly because there might be an adjustment to it and I might need to rub it out and if I put it in really really heavily and dark with a point you know, if I went like that um, it would be very hard to move and, and eradicate and rub out some of these marks and tonal shifts are really really subtle and some of the things I want to keep because the it's the lovely intricate portrait of a face then see where this nose comes down across into the shadow how that shadow moves across the face this way have that line of both the 
inside of her eye and it's repeated again for the eyelid itself it comes up this way it then curls off this way and the ankle gets wider between them and it comes down that way catch up there down there. I can then see the the shape of the eye, less white of white of the eye, how far it comes in and how much horizontal that is going across. There's a little dip just there to give the centre of the pupil and how it then comes up to a shadow. Shadow actually gives a good indication of where the eye stops. Just on the side, little tiny triangle shadow. Not the circular bit of her eye, but the little tiny shadow on the right hand side. And on the other side of that, for the, uh, coming out a little bit further, it kind of comes down. And that's where that shadow of that underneath part of her eye actually is. Then it goes out to capture the eye orbit going up to where kind of the eye socket is coming up. It doesn't quite come out right but back here there's a little tiny slither of light in between them. Now that comes up at an angle to the apex of her eyebrow and sweeps back down and this mark here is wider at this point. Now it means that I have to move this eye up a little bit and maybe get a bit bolder with my marks because this is that wide. It comes down. There. This eye is actually bigger than I've got it. And the inside of our nose is the extension of this shape of a shadow of a eyebrow. It goes on the inside of the nose this way, almost meets the corner of the eye, then cuts back again this way. So these are still very scribbly light marks, but they really help you place place the eyes. Okay, um, does this type of drawing method have a fancy name? If not, when we could call it one. Um, People call it very sculptural, um, very loose, uh, expressive mark making. Um, I don't think it has any, because it kind of crosses over so many different genres, you know, but you could say it's impressionistic. If you have a look at William Turner, if you have a look at the quality of paint that Sargent's used on that shoulder, it's very similar to a Turner painting. And Turner was often um, highlighted as the inspiration and starting off point of many impressionist artists. and many of the impressionist artists work kind of devolved into lots of different schools of artwork that would call itself abstract abstract expressionism where you don't want to know what the image was anymore you're just exploring the marks suggested by the observation of something then it's just about the the mark making of somebody's emotion you know it's the physicality of paint describing something that's calm or aggressive or sharp or angsty or the poetry side of it takes over. If we're trying to pull that back and apply it to something that's physical, in a physical realm, we want to see if understand what a physical person is or is like, or we want to try to express what we think that person is like, we start to use marks to um, inform that. That's the poetry side. So it's a wonderful play from something that's very analytical and very uh, academician, you know, 
some of the drawing techniques that we've been using have been a very methodical academician way of drawing. To this way, we're starting to have a little bit more personality, a person, uh, you know, my personal thoughts as an artist it comes into play. Um, now, I'm talking about my drawing as opposed to Sargent's painting. I'm not Sargent, he's a great painter. Um, I'm not anywhere trying to say I'm anywhere near him. I'm not way, 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 way out of his league because um, there's so much effortlessness in the way he painted and described things. Um, and there's a beauty to it that I, w I admire, and it there's certain elements to it that I would really like to get in my drawing, but my processes are not really the same. I'm going to just give a slight indication of that highlight but I'm using my rubber to do it you know he would use this paintbrush this gives a little bit more different flavor and feel to the quality of the portrait that I want to produce that shadow then that we had here that I used the edge of I'm going to scribble down here and scribble down where that shadow or highlight is on the on the nose here. It just helped me re sculpt it. There's one that is on the top of the eye, just there, which comes across. And the one that's over here on the top of the ear. So I'm going back over some of the marks I've got already. Um, so yeah, so I, maybe you want to call it a name. I don't know. <laughs> what do you want to call it? Give it a name. I don't. You know, sometimes we are um, very deferential to the past and you know what things are specifically called. But I think there's room for artists who are rediscovering or revisiting certain styles of things to do exactly what you said. Give it a different name. Give it a different flavor. Add a little bit to it. Give it a little bit of attitude of of the now. It doesn't have to be as deferential to a past just because it's an art form. Um, we have to pay homage to where it come from, I think. And that comes through understanding and learning of people like Sargent and Turner um, because they inform how they did things and why they did them. And they can help us you know, pick a new path for new modern art to develop, or say modern as contemporary art. A lot of people say, oh, I don't like contemporary art, I don't like modern art. And you go, well, the pictures I produce today are of this modern era. They're not under the school of modernism. But I'm not an academician either. Um, there's nothing wrong with being an academician or an abstract artist or you know, a modern artist, modern, modernist school. All these things are different flavors of the same thing. They're just being an art. So, uh, yeah, if you come up with a good name, type it in. <laughs> this is what I like about this is this art chat. This is it says art chat. Um, you know, it's not just me drawing and uh, talking about my artwork. I'm just explaining the processes that I'm going through as I'm drawing this drawing. Um, but it's art chat, so a couple of conversations, like good starting off points, or giving it a name, um, can spark good, good conversations about. Where can you see the new art movements going? What is it that inspires you to create and draw yourself? What is it you love drawing? What is it you'd like to develop? I'm using this uh, arrays just to redefine where this jawline is. As it came down there. This has a better relationship now, I think, between the space of where her eye is and where her no her, her jawline is. I think her nose and shadow underneath the nose comes out a little bit further so round. which means it comes in this side I 
Hi Angela, good afternoon. Uh really enjoyed that lean, many thanks. Camera and beard all sorted now. Yeah, it is. Uh yeah, I forgot to say about my beard. Uh uh end of the filming and all that, but also the ma in obviously after COVID I have to wear a mask when I go outside. It was starting to fold the beard up into my mouth and it was just getting way too much. It was also sticking out in loads of different angles. So I look looked like the the Tasmanian devil, the of the cartoon character. Oh. It was just getting a bit too much. I've got a lot of hair as it is, tucked underneath, so um bless her, Andrea is my partner and she is she hates beards and she <laughs> she's had to put up with this monstrous thing growing out of my face for ages. So it's like I just went right, it is coming off. So got the shavers out. It was done in a few minutes. Uh, there was no trip involved to her hairdressers or fancy barbers. Uh if it's me and a pair of uh, shears. <laughs> so yeah, see my chin again, which is quite nice. The funny thing is, Andrea and Callan here kind of just end up staring at me for ages. Whenever you do it, it's like she says it's like getting a new boyfriend every couple of months. <laughs> or fiance, should I say? We are now we are now officially engaged. I am a I am a fiance. You didn't already know. So yeah, I'm kind of playing around with using the razor to kind of sculpt and draw in just as much as I was applying. I'm, I'm using it to kind of rub um, rub the charcoal away, just to kind of sketch in and draw into it. It's a wonderful stuff. Cut like I on this side, which is quite nice. Um, that's a wonderful highlight inside of this nose, and I've kind of missed putting it in. Because it really gives an edge to where that nose actually comes out and goes back up again. And I don't think I had it in there enough before. Um, this comes out and a little bit straighter. That mark isn't there. So it's funny how you start to see things while you initially place things. If you watch the adjustment of things as they develop. Especially in this loose kind of freer flowing style, it's much freer and expressive, you know. But you need you can't just be random. You can't be just sticking anything anywhere. It's about really developing it. Uh, like you say, having your camera as well, it is a joy not to have to keep switching that camera on and off again and fiddling around with the with the program. It was just really a, pay, a a bit of a shame this morning that the. Um, the broadcast stopped, but that had nothing to do with me. That was something to do with the internet connection. But I just switched everything on, switched everything back off again, and it worked fine. I did nothing technically different at all. So I know it's to do with the internet and not me. Um, yeah, but it's, it's so much nicer just to be, you have to be kind of constantly checking whether the camera's gone off or not. There's a lovely shadow that comes underneath this part of her eye orbit. And it delineates where the edge of this eyelid is, and it comes back out here, and then it comes down. And what it's telling me is that this still needs has to move over this way a bit. A wonderful and this softness that comes over cascades through the hair here. Um, Put some marks in for this uh, headband. Now the headband in the picture is, is red. Obviously, I'm working in monochrome. Um, the highlight of this is a very bright white, which I can use obviously as my best advantage because I'm using white paper. I can rub through it, get back to the white page. But I can also do that for things like this, which is the Highlights of the um, 
of the earring. I think you would have just used some just slightly off white to give it a real highlight colour. Here's a white splodge just about there, which I think might be just a suggestion of an earring that's sticking out on the other side. Could be just a white splodge of paint that you flicked on by accident. It's just it is a very sort of painterly sketch. It's, a, it's in a private collection. This was painted in 1878, but you could have just listed this girl off the street and painted it from today. It, it, it's that fresh of a painting, and that was what was really interesting. I mean, he was so celebrated at the time for his uh, his portraiture, but he got a bit sick of it. He got a bit sick and a bit jaded by the celebrity nature of uh, his kind of fame as a portrait painter, and then just started painting landscapes. I think it's always a shame that um, you know outside influences can often ruin your enjoyment of doing something kind of, I always get a little bit more stubborn and a little bit more kind of no I want to do this I want to do it for me and I'm not I, every artist is different and I can't tell you obviously I don't know Sergeant I don't know the, the ins and outs of all the history of his life as to why he did and didn't do things I know there was a lot of uh, controversy over some uh, portraits that he did, like Madame X. Um, and some were loved and some were hated by the sitters and they become notorious and things like that. Had a fashion element to them. A lot of drama. Maybe he just didn't like the drama more of it. Maybe he thought like you can you couldn't go too far wrong with a tree. <laughs> They're not gonna get upset if you don't draw all of its leaves. You draw them with bigger branches or whatever. So who's going to have a go tomorrow? Is anybody going to have a go at the Sky Portrait um, Artist of the Year on Sky TV Facebook page tomorrow at 10? Or do you tune in later and watch it? It's interesting just to list the conversations because often the sitters are not artists. They're, often it's the first time they've ever sat for a portrait before. Um, and it's just the conversations are just interesting to understand. You know what people's expectations are of a portrait. Um, so. There we are. Just concentrating while I was putting these marks for this eye. Again, I'm, I'm just suggesting where they are at the minute by scribbling in the shadows but what's lovely is that the quality of his inspiration in, the, in his portraiture is inspiring me to do something that I love doing and I don't do enough of in my own work which is nice because I kind of think I, I'd like to get back to some of the elements of this but maybe have just a bit more refinement to them so it's a balancing act you give these things a try see what they like see if it works if it doesn't work, you know, pull it back a little bit. Um, this is the ear we're talking about on this side. Uh, you got to go, Alex. No worries. Um, have a good day. Watch it when you want to watch it. Uh, I'll definitely be here again next week. Same time, 2 o'clock. So it's 2 o'clock every Saturday, uh, UK time. Desiree, you got to go too. Thanks for the get class. That no, was my pleasure. I've noticed it's ten past four. And I've gone over the, sort of the two hours. Um, I'm just going to carry on a little bit longer because I was a little bit late getting on. And so you're more than welcome to sort of stay with me while I do this and catch up at the end later on. If you if you have to go, you have to go. It's okay. I'll see you guys later. Thanks very much for being here. Um, yeah, it's always a pleasure. Really, really enjoy enjoying my Saturday mornings. Um, starting to enjoy Sunday mornings too. Good thought. The sky portrait. Um, I'm scribbling in the shadows, this line where this uh, 
top lip is and how it comes across his face and how it meets up with a line that's quite horizontal about there and it's got a slight turn up just there really subtle the dip of it makes just about there but what informs the bottom lip is a shadow so I'm going to say this is inspired by um, a sergeant and it's after his style if you like um, of painting it's, it's nowhere near his style of painting obviously I don't want to be too conceited to say, oh, this is just like Sergeant. It's not. It's far off of it. He was so refined in the marks that he made. I would never scribble all over his painting like this. He kind of walked up and went, frump, that's where that goes. Blah, that's where that goes. Because he spent time looking and just uh, mixing up his palette about what he was going to place the next image. But there's a lovely looseness to the qualities of his work that I really admire. And say people call him call it very painterly um, but there's an element in there which I would really love to get in my own drawing so spend this time as a pure pleasure to kind of experiment and look at the uh, look at the drawing we're starting to get an element into it that's slightly out of focus whether my drawing is just slightly fuzzy. I'll zoom in out a bit so you can see it a little bit better. I think I must say this side comes in an awful lot more than I've got it. I'm going to apply for Sky Portrait Artist of the Year again and I've been playing around with the idea of having more of this quality of work as the direction of I'd like my sort of portrait to go that this is what I'm going to try for my self portrait um, it's quite experimental and, but it's got a lot of it's a lovely blend I think between the two of uh, abstract experience Expressionism, expressionism, impressionism, and a sense of realism to it. There's a real balance. When you get it right, it really sings off the page. I think well, Sargent was a master at it. Um, but if you have a look at the old masters as well, they were also very good at capturing just a, a, a gestural brushstroke, but it capturing so much information and in telling the story of what it was trying to depict. You know, whether it be a chair or a flower or whatever, um, there's a wonderful quality to it. I've got her looking very kind of oriental, which is quite nice. There's an oriental look to a little bit of the element of her face there. I think I've just kind of exaggerated a little bit. So hopefully uh, something new I'm going to play around with next week. I've got a an idea to do some annotation, so I'll be able to draw little directions and things over the top of this. It's very very fuzzy still. My green light from my uh, backdrop isn't the green mark by her chin. That's not a, a glitch in your TV screen. It's my green screen <laughs> catching the light. Um,
trying to make sure. Ooh, okay. Let's see if we can get some detail in there. Um, again, certain things, this is a lot sharper as a as marks coming in and out. Much more definite and darker. You can see that. Uh, in some areas, this is a lot softer. The rub. This whole area. Just soften it. Darker here. Ooh, maybe not that dark. <laughs> give it, just made it give her a panda eye. moment of that where it just disappears into the face so when I'm shading I'm bringing that shadow right the way through right from the background right the way through so although that certain elements of this are going to be sharper certain elements of it are going to be softer you know how we build one edge up and knock one edge back but there's a wonderful kind of lightish quality starting to come through the, the drawing itself um, I'm going to use different brushes to brush certain areas it's a slightly stiffer brush that I've got here. Um, it's not a, it's not a stipple brush bristle, you know, hog hair. It's just a, a shorter bristle, very similar to the bristles I've got in a longer mop brush. But because they're shorter, they feel a little bit stiffer, which means I can scrub the page a little bit. But now I've got to a stage where I can really see where things are actually going. I can really sculpt this light coming around. certain elements I can soften and lighten a little bit just there for this eye a little bit just there for the eye on the eye of that side and So again, I'm not necessarily trying to do a lifelike representation of Sargent's drawing here, but I think I wanted to capture some of the little marks and nuances on on the page that I quite liked and get a representation of the face. And I could play around and go more and more refined as I carried on with the picture, but it might end up taking away some of the elements of the things that I like about it so I might kind of leave that where it is um, just suggest that bottom a little bit more so just on the underneath of her corner of her mouth just to give that little kind of hint of three dimensionality to it. Do you see what I mean? Do you see what I think? Hopefully that makes that makes sense. Um it's kind of like it is a fun, free, loose way of drawing. It allows you to make mistakes, it allows you to cover them up, it allows you to add more stuff on. It's not so demanding as having something that has has so much realism to him that if you end up kind of putting a shadow in the wrong place it really throws things out. But remember what I was saying about these marks that he had beside his face here. I can put some of those back in. And it lifts that bottom jaw out. You've got these marks where they come across. 
of uh, her collar and it gives an, an edge to where it comes down to where the shirt meets We'll put some dark marks in here and bring that down a little bit closer. Um, little bit lighter at this part of the hair before it goes into the darkness there um, it's like it's just slightly out of focus and I quite like that So what do you think? Enjoy that? Hopefully, uh, kind of trying different styles out. I mean, it's not as, as refined, as perfect as it could be. There's lots of areas in this which you can go back over again. Um, you know, using, again, I've got a darker, softer graphite pencil, so literally dark, dark marks. I could go over this whole area and pick out little nuances and elements to the eyes and faces and things like that and really draw these eyes back in but there is something nice and loose and about the quality of it so I'm going to say to you have a go try it out you can enjoy the process really enjoy the mark making process of it don't worry about the end result just try to get the accuracy of maybe form and placement of things but enjoy the expressive nature of putting the marks down and you might surprise yourself what you can come out with. Be elements of your drawing which you love and elements of your drawing you don't like. Concentrate on the ones that you love and see what it was that you were doing right and replicate them. Things that you didn't like, leave them to one side. It's okay. A good luck on tomorrow. A good luck to you, Michael, as well, uh, for Sky Portrait, um, M-Y-P-A-O-T-W, which is hashtag my portrait artist of the week. Uh, Angela, good luck as well. I've been seeing your work. It's been great. It's been lovely to see your work on Instagram. Um, so yeah, please put it up there. Keep going. Uh, if you're happy enough and you like this and you want to share it with people, you're more than welcome. We'll be very happy if you did that. Uh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're watching this at a later date, you can press the subscription button and you'll get a notification when I go live, which is 2 o'clock on every Saturday. Uh, again, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for being with us. I'll see you again next week at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Until then, I'll see you later. In fact, I can't switch you off yet because the uh, <laughs> my mouse is behind the book. <laughs> so I have to stick with me for a couple more seconds while I just say thanks very much. And uh, I'll see you next week. All right. Until then.